With his dashing good looks and irresistible charm, Prince William has emerged as the British royal family's golden boy. <laughs> William gives the impression of being a well-mannered, responsible and mature young man who shows a strong sense of duty and loyalty to the royal family, fully aware of the role he is to play as the future king. My brother and I were lucky enough to grow up supported by the love and nurturing of our family. They saw to our education, our health, our well-being and every other need. Since birth, his upbringing has been carefully managed and his destiny thoughtfully mapped out by the monarchy. His greatest influence was his mother, Diana, Princess of Wales, who gave him a truly unique and loving childhood throughout her all too short life. We wanted to have this big concert with, you know, full of energy, full of um, sort of fun and happiness, which I knew she would have wanted. And on her birthday as well, it's got to be the best birthday present she's ever had. William uses his profile and status for the greater good and is a tireless campaigner for the environment and humanitarian causes. To alleviate poverty and assist development in African countries. It was while excelling at sports and university studies that his greatly publicised romance with Kate Middleton began. I think for William, I should think he's probably not very keen to get married because, you know, he's got a lot of living to do first. After eight years of courting, Kate would have to wait no more. They became engaged and are destined to have the wedding of their generation. Royalists pray that their marriage will pass the test of time, unlike those that have gone before them. I will. Kate has been at William's side throughout the major milestones of his military career. I didn't join the forces to be treated any different. He may be the future king, but first and foremost, he is a protective and loving big brother to Prince Harry. He does do a bit of the washing up, then he leaves most of it in the sink, and then it comes back in the morning and I have to wash it up. Oh, the lies. William has shown courage and maturity beyond his years, and has transformed from being a shy teenager into an independent, strong-willed young man, with the destiny of the monarchy resting firmly on his shoulders. Since birth, William's personal life has been the subject of great media attention. More recently, royal commentators have been following his relationship with Kate Middleton, which began in 2003 while attending St Andrews University. William and Kate met their first week at university because they were both at St Andrews studying history of art. But at that time, Kate was going out with someone else, in fact, a friend of William's. And it wasn't until their second year of, of the four-year course that William became really close to Kate because he shared a house with her and, and, and three, three other friends of his. And they shared a really pretty, Georgian townhouse in the centre of St Andrews. But it still was about a year later before the, the national press sort of logged onto the fact that she was an item with him, not with anyone else. The Prince had developed a great disdain for the paparazzi and believes they contributed to his mother's death. The royal family moved to shield William from the press by providing tabloids with regular updates of his life. He switched his main subject from art history to geography and excelled. Catherine Middleton. He graduated the same year as Kate with upper second class honours, the highest honours awarded to any heir of the British throne. William Wales. Well, they had a wonderful time at St Andrews because they really were protected. I mean, obviously there's a lot of a local paparazzi, but they really were protected. And then they moved out of the town into a little farmhouse. So they were living together, which is, is sort of quite unheard of, really, for a sort of future king to be openly living with his girlfriend. Um, so they had a wonderful time. They had, you know, four years of a really good time. But of course, when they both left, or came down, as you call it, uh, they slightly went their separate ways because, you know, William ha had things to do, places to go, and so did she. Rumours of a possible engagement swirled around the pair. Middleton attended William's passing out parade at Sandhurst. This was the first high profile event she attended as his guest 
and speculation grew. The relationship was followed so closely that bookmakers took bets on the possibility of a royal wedding. The media's focus on Kate was so sharp that when she received a parking ticket near her Chelsea home, it made headlines and the evening news. We understand that nobody, uh, nobody likes getting a parking ticket, but we have to make sure that we fairly and consistently enforce the rules and regulations, which is what happened here. And I'm very pleased that Kate, uh, Kate was very gracious about the way in which the, uh, about the, uh, receiving the ticket, as you would expect from someone who uh, may well be the future Queen of England. Media attention became so intense that William made a specific request to the press to keep their distance from Kate. As I say, she, she is famous. She knows that. She's going to have to put up with odd photos. But there's a difference between taking a couple of respectful, distant photos and wishing her a good morning and standing with a lens this long right in her face and trying to take a photo up her skirt or something, which is, to me, beyond contempt. It was an all too familiar sight for the monarchy. In the lead up to Diana's engagement, she too was besieged by the media. How well you're coping with all the press attention? Well, as you can, you can see, you can tell. <laughs> are, you, are you bearing up with it quite well though? Because it must be quite a strain with all of us, aren't you? Well, it is, naturally. In March 2007, Middleton complained of media harassment by the Daily Mirror. The possibility of legal action against the media was raised. News International responded by banning all its newspapers from using paparazzi pictures of Middleton. The idea that we should introduce some sort of law that stops paparazzi photographers following around those who, because they go out with a celebrity, become themselves celebrities, I think is wrong. Because in the end, if you go out with the future King of England, there is going to be a huge media interest in what you're up to. That's just reality. We need to know what's going on. We need to know what uh, the royalty are up to. By April 2007, the tabloids need to know became too much for Kate. The Sun newspaper reported that the couple had split during a holiday in the Swiss resort of Zermatt. Well, the, the story has been, uh, when will they get married? And we were so preoccupied on that, and everyone was, that the story that when will they split was not something we even contemplated. So it is a surprise, it's a bolt from the blue. Um, only three weeks ago, the two of them were in Zermatt in Switzerland, in the Alps, skiing down the mountains, cuddling and kissing, having a whale of a time. And I, you could not have predicted three weeks ago that um, you'd be here today announcing that, that, that they've split up once and for all. There was a great deal of speculation about the possible reasons for the split. Some said that Kate felt William had not been paying her enough attention, and photos emerged of William in a nightclub partying with young women. I was absolutely shocked when I discovered that they, him and Kate finally decided to split. But I suppose if I think about it, not surprised because the clues were there. You know, William was just getting up to pranks with girls at nightclubs in Bournemouth and uh, normally they go on holiday at Easter time for, uh, for uh, 10 days. This time this year they didn't so the clue was there but um, I'm, still, I'm still shocked because I thought she and he were a perfect couple. Other reports stated that he had received advice from members of the royal family not to rush into marriage. William also went on the record saying he was far too young to marry. William, after what happened to his father, cannot get it wrong. He cannot marry the wrong woman. And I suppose, in a funny kind of way, it's better that we're here today talking about his girlfriend leaving, splitting up with her, than us talking about a royal divorce, which might cause serious problems for Buckingham Palace in the future. Several months later, the couple resumed their relationship. Kate attended a party at Lulworth Army Barracks as Prince William's guest. And now that things have settled a bit, they, they are seeing a, a great deal of each other because they're both in London. They're not living together. Kate has a flat in the King's Road. William has his apartment at Clarence House. Um, but they can see each other all the time. And of course, the problem that Kate has now is that she's followed everywhere by paparazzi. Kate has to decide if she's 
prepared to go on with this relationship because it, her life will never be her own now. Or if she really can't hack it because it's not, she's not going to get married tomorrow. Um, and who knows what will happen. Um, she's starting up a children's clothing company, which of course she, she, most people that leave university wouldn't think of starting their own company immediately, but because of her association with William, people are clamoring to get a bit of her. So you know, if she's a bright girl, she's taking advantage of that. And she might make a very big success of it. Well, Kate comes from a very, I suppose we would call it middle class family. They live in Berkshire and her parents are very entrepreneurial. They started an internet company selling party goods and it's done very well indeed. But would Kate's middle class family be welcome at Buckingham Palace? I don't think that the royal family integrate with anyone unless it's really serious. I mean, even Sophie Wessex's parents weren't integrated into the royal family, ever, really. Um, I, I think that it's something they simply don't do. The only parents they ever really integrated in was, was Mark Phillips' parents, and the Queen got on very well with his mother. But otherwise, they take you over. It was said that the Queen expressed a private desire that the couple should date for at least five years and that Middleton should first secure a proper full-time job before the couple announced their engagement. Finally, on November 16th, 2010, it was announced that Prince William and Kate Middleton were engaged. The Prince popped the question during a holiday in Kenya. William gave Kate his mother's famous diamond and sapphire engagement ring. The wedding date was set for April 29th, 2011. The funds raised from the broadcast rights of Kate and William's first interview after announcing their engagement were donated to charity. Throughout the Prince's childhood, his mother Diana exposed William to numerous charities. Following her death, he was destined to continue her good work and legacy. <laughs> Who's that which? Who, who did this one? James. James, is that your one, James? Yes. William and Harry formed their own charitable foundation and became patrons of many of the charities that their mother supported. William is dedicated to making a difference by becoming involved with charities rather than just being a royal ornament by simply attending opening ceremonies. The Prince is patron of Centrepoint. This charity assists the homeless. My brother and I were lucky enough to grow up supported by the love and nurturing of our family. They saw to our education, our health, our well-being and every other need. In a bid to raise awareness and to genuinely understand the problem, he slept out overnight in the streets of London. Again following in his mother's footsteps, he became patron of the Royal Marsden Hospital. He gained first-hand experience by working in the children's unit and helped out in the medical research, catering and fundraising departments. I hate being fed 12 times a day, I think the animal put on weight definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. yes. The Prince spent two weeks with a Mountain Rescue England and Wales team. He became involved with his charity to highlight the selfless and courageous work of the volunteers. <laughs> William was delighted when asked to become the royal patron of Tusk Trust. He and Harry witnessed the charity's work when visiting Africa. The charity's projects include conserving wildlife, community development projects, and providing educational facilities across the continent. William and Harry teamed up again to take part in the Enduro Africa Motorcycle Challenge. The eight-day race raised money for UNICEF, Nelson Mandela's Children's Fund, and Prince Harry's Centre Bali Charity. They also became joint patrons of the Henry van Straubenzee Memorial Fund. The charity supports schools in Uganda. Henry was one of the Prince's closest childhood friends. When aged just 18, he tragically died 
in a car crash. Having lost someone so close in similar circumstances, Harry and I understand how important it is to keep their memory alive. There is no finer way than that which Alex and Claire have chosen. This is the first charity of which we are both patrons, and it couldn't be a better one. As Henry was such a very close friend of ours, and because we believe so strongly in the need to alleviate poverty and assist development in African countries, such as Uganda. William is a passionate environmentalist. He and Sir David Attenborough officially opened the Natural History Museum's Darwin Centre, a scientific research and collection storage facility. Here, the work carried out by scientists is aimed at understanding and protecting the planet. I remember coming here first uh, as a child with my mother. Uh, millions of others will have shared with me uh, and Sir David uh, that sense of awe and wonder and just a shiver of something more as you step off the streets uh, through the doors to stare into the beady eye of the blue whale or the terrifying eye socket of a T-Rex. A moment never to be forgotten, especially when everything is a lot bigger than you. That whole experience sparked in me a love of the natural world which has stayed with me and still grows within me. How it works, how the natural balance depends on us, how we depend on it. Encouraged by my father, this boyhood fascination has developed into an interest in how we, as members of the human race, meet the challenges now facing us and our planet. The Prince regularly participates in charity polo matches. Despite being left-handed, which is a disadvantage in the sport, he is skilled and very competitive. Although Kate suffers from an allergy to horses, she has been a regular feature on the sidelines of polo fields throughout the course of their relationship. Proceeds of this event went to the Child Bereavement Charity, of which William is a patron. Their mission is for all bereaved children and grieving families to have access to support from trained professionals. William and his father attended a brokerage firm to help out at the company's annual charity fancy dress day. As William attended the phones petitioning for donations, it was reported that Charles asked, is he offering you a wedding present? With Wills replying, he's asked me if I will marry his daughter. The day raised 64 million pounds. Skillforce, another charity that William supports, received a share of the proceeds. Skillforce aims to unlock the potential of disadvantaged young people and to help them to be prepared for life after school and find employment. <laughs> William and Harry attended the City Salute, London's tribute to the British Armed Forces. The young royals called upon Britain to show its gratitude for the selfless courage of the armed services. The event raised almost one million pounds for wounded servicemen. Later that day, the princes visited Headley Court Rehabilitation Centre to offer moral support to wounded veterans. One of the soldiers they met was flown home on the same flight as Harry from Afghanistan, after the media published the Prince's presence on the front line. William and Harry's greatest fundraising charity event was the Concert for Diana. The event was staged to celebrate their mother's life on the 10th anniversary of her death. We wanted to have this big concert with, you know, full of energy, full of, um, sort of fun and happiness, which I knew she would have wanted. And on her birthday as well, it's got to be the best birthday present she's ever had. And with it, we can, by the two of us um, organising it, um, we wanted to have the, uh, the fact that the evening is all about our, our mother. Uh, the main purpose is to celebrate and, and to have fun and to remember her in, in a fun way. We've got Selson and John, um, we've got the English National Ballet. Um, Andrew Lloyd Webber is doing a um, exclusive sort of uh, greatest hits um, bit. And then we've got uh, Pharrell Joss Williams. And Joss, Pharrell Williams and Joss Stone. There's plenty, plenty more, um, don't worry. 
<laughs> That's a little flavour. <laughs> what does your bit consist of? And which one of you, you would you say is the most natural performer? <laughs> natural performer. <laughs> Oh, in front of me, that's wicked. Thank yeah, you, darling. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, the idea is we wanted to get um, uh, artists that our mother really uh, loved, um, and then um, artists that both Harry and I enjoyed. The who's who of the entertainment industry donated their services in support of the boys, and the much-loved People's Princess. I met her a long time ago, and and William and Harry, they were wee little kids, you know. They probably don't even remember it. <laughs> but uh, they probably don't even know who I am. But uh, yeah, I remember meeting her, sweet lady. And what's really cool about this whole thing is that, you know, there's, there's positives and negatives in anybody's life. But what's great is that everybody remembers the wonderful things she stood for. What I see is a mom, you know, especially through William and Harry, I see a mom. You know, I think that I think that the world, not just Americans, but the world had a bond with her because she was so genuine about really being true. Really being true and honest and, and from royalty sometimes you don't expect that they're going to give you that realism of character and you know because of what they're supposed to do or because of the honor they're supposed to hold, you expect not someone to kiss a child with AIDS and you don't expect the certain things that, that Diana has been known and will always be known for her valor in, in strength. And so I think that um, America's as well as the world, I mean, they're all watching. The concert was a huge success, attracting a crowd of 62,000 in the stadium and watched on television by millions more around the world. The £1.2 million raised ensured that eight charities received at least £150,000 each from the proceeds. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The princes also organised a memorial service to commemorate the anniversary. The service is going to include uh, both sides of the family, our mother's side and our father's side, um, everyone getting together. It should be a good occasion. And Lots of loud hymns, I vow to see my country, all the, all the good ones. And um, no, it should be a very sort of simple and nice uh, service. William set the tone when he led the readings. I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. The mature, sensitive prince that we know today is the result of an incredibly unique life, which has been one of privilege and adversity. After Princess Diana endured 17 hours of labor, William was finally born on June 21st, 1982 at St. Mary's Hospital. At the christening, he wore a lace gown that was made for Queen Victoria's eldest daughter. He was named His Royal Highness Prince William of Wales, although it's said that he was affectionately called Wombat and Wills by his parents. Prince Charles was overjoyed with William's arrival into the family as now the royal succession was absolute. Well, I'm so relieved and delighted. It's marvelous. It's rather a grown up thing, I find. <laughs> rather a shock to my sister. He's, he's, he's in marvelous form. Does the baby have any hair? marvelous. Diana was a proactive parent. She insisted on taking nine month old William on an official visit to Australia. Her decision to travel together as a family was considered to be unconventional. Not only was William so young, but both the first and second in line to the throne would be traveling together. When visiting Alice Springs, the students of the School of the Air were keen to learn more about their future king. Does Prince William have a favorite toy? Um, Jamie, he loves his koala bear he's got. But he hasn't got anything particular. He just likes something with a bit of noise. 
Um, you've got a plastic whale that throws things out the top, little balls. <laughs> During his first photo shoot in New Zealand, the fair-haired little boy with blue eyes demonstrated he was far from camera shy. The following year, he gained a little brother, Prince Harry. They would be the closest of siblings and the best of friends throughout the difficult years ahead. At the age of three on his first day of nursery school, it was evident that giving the press a photo opportunity was already second nature. The little prince enjoyed acting in nursery school plays and later Harry got involved. William was a mischievous child. It was reported that he took great delight in flushing his father's shoes down the toilet. Diana was a fun-loving mother to Wills. She even took part in a parents' race at the Weatherby School Sports Day. His first official public engagement took place when he was eight years old on St David's Day in Wales. Here it was revealed that he was left-handed, like his great-grandfather, King George VI. While attending Ludgrove School in Berkshire, William was admitted to hospital after having been hit on the side of the forehead with a golf club by a fellow student. The prince suffered a depressed fracture of the skull that required surgery. This left him with a permanent scar. His mother remained at his bedside whilst Charles became the subject of widespread negative criticism in the press when he continued with his scheduled engagements that evening. Whilst attending Eton College, his parents' deeply troubled marriage weighed heavily on William. He frequently visited his grandmother for advice at nearby Windsor Castle. The Queen was actively involved in his upbringing and is said to be extremely fond and supportive of her grandson. Despite the pressures and expectations of the monarchy, Diana was determined to raise William and Harry as normally as possible. She took her boys to Canada for a fun family vacation. She also exposed her children to the suffering of the world by taking them to homeless shelters and hospital wards. It was important to her that William, as a future king, realized he was part of a multiracial society where poverty, war, and disease were present. Their relationship was close. Diana was quoted describing him as the man in my life. She relied upon her eldest son for comfort and advice. It was said that Wills even announced that he wanted to be a policeman when he grew up so that he could protect his mother. Harry replied, you can't, you've got to be king. On another occasion, it was reported that when Diana locked herself in the bathroom after an argument with Charles, William pushed tissues under the door with a note saying, I hate to see you sad. By the age of nine, he had already learned how to book a table at San Lorenzo, Diana's favorite restaurant, to cheer her up. It's believed that William later advised her to accelerate her divorce proceedings by agreeing to be stripped of her royal title, reassuring her, you'll still be mummy. In the early hours of August 31st, 1997, while holidaying at Balmoral, William awoke to the news that his mother had been fatally wounded in a car accident in Paris. William, aged 15 and Harry 12, returned to London to view the mass of floral tributes left by members of the public and to meet some of the mourners and well-wishers who crowded outside his mother's home at Kensington Palace. At the funeral, William and Harry insisted on performing the gruelling task of walking behind the gun carriage that carried their mother's coffin to Westminster Abbey. Their father, grandfather and maternal uncle accompanied the boys on this harrowing walk. Despite being deeply affected by the loss of their mother, the boys displayed great composure and dignity throughout the funeral service that stopped a nation.
After completing his studies at Eton with three A-levels, the Prince took a gap year, during which he took part in British Army training exercises in Belize and taught children in southern Chile. It was during this time that he lived with other young teachers, sharing common household chores, including cleaning the toilet and also volunteering as a disc jockey for a local radio station. When he returned from Chile, the Prince was given a pop star welcome when he joined his father in Glasgow. They visited drug addicts, young offenders and asylum seekers that lived in one of the most impoverished estates of Scotland's largest city. It was reminiscent of Diana mania as the crowd cheered the handsome prince. Like his mother, he has the common touch and is at ease when conversing with pensioners. He clearly enjoyed a breakdancing routine performed by a group of young refugees. As an amateur DJ, he spoke their language when talking about music. So what's your favorite, what, what songs do you like? Mm -hmm. uh, Stan. Yeah, Stan. Stan. Yeah, okay. You've got the bandanas and everything for it as well. Yeah. yeah. Sort of. Charles had personally chosen the engagements in Scotland, keen to show Will some of the Prince's Trust's work. Clearly proud of his son, Charles took the opportunity to tease him. It's good of him to uh, alter his uh, sleeping habits in order to, to be here. Uh, this morning. He was very worried that I was going to embarrass him, but I succeeded in doing it. The day was also said to be a peace offering and a thank you to the media, in the hope that they will now leave him alone to undertake his four year art history degree. The day ended on a solemn note, with William and Charles signing the 9 11 condolence book at the American Embassy. William then entered the University of St Andrews. In an interview marking the start of his university career, he insisted, I just want to go to university and have fun. I want to be an ordinary student. William participated in typical college life, going to bars and socializing with his friends and girlfriend, Kate Middleton. But it's impossible to be ordinary when you're second in line to the throne. He was the first member of the British royal family to have a set of stamps issued to mark his 21st birthday. At this time, he stated, I want people to call me William for now. I don't want all the formalities because they're not needed for the time being. Rumours circulated in the press that he didn't want to inherit the throne. He responded by saying, It's something I was born into, and it's my duty. These stories about me not wanting to be king are all wrong. It's a very important role and one that I don't take lightly. In a bid to allow William's studies to be paparazzi free, the royal family gave the press staged managed photo opportunities and regular updates of the prince's life. What, what have we done wrong? <laughs> I'm coming up. Charles clearly didn't enjoy the process. You've got a very carefully planned, I see. And William seemed bashful when asked about Kate. <laughs> so, so Prince William, romance here. clearly in the air here. Uh, could there be another wedding perhaps on the card sometime soon? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't think so. Back to us. A lot of coverage this morning, William, of uh, Kate. I wonder how you feel about that and how she's bearing up under the scrutiny. I haven't seen any of it. I'm just gagging it on the slopes, basically. Simple as that. Right. Okay. Thank right. you very much. Sadly, their skiing holiday in Switzerland was cut short by the news that at the age of 101, the Queen Mother had passed away in her sleep. At the ceremony tomorrow, I hope that sadness will blend with a wider sense of thanksgiving, not just for her life, but for the times in which she lived. It was a difficult time for the whole family, for Princess Margaret had also died seven weeks prior. William joined Harry in the queue to file past his great-grandmother and reportedly said that even at the age of 100, she could reduce them to tears of laughter. 
After graduating from St Andrews University, Prince William followed Harry to the Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst, as an officer cadet. He'll be up at about six in the morning and probably not get to bed much before midnight. Uh, there'll be lots of drill, uh, there'll be lots of fitness training, uh, tactics, uh, shooting and so on. Um, the basics of soldiering. William graduated from Sandhurst the day after the conclusion of the official investigation into the death of his mother. Both William and Harry welcomed the findings that found that Diana had been unlawfully killed by the grossly negligent driving of her chauffeur and the paparazzi photographers. The princes called for the speculation and conspiracy theories surrounding their mother's death to finally come to an end. On a happier note, William had plenty of moral support at the graduation ceremony and did well to contain his laughter when the Queen spoke to him while inspecting the troops. William then officially received his commission as second lieutenant. He expressed a desire to participate in active service but, being second in line to the throne, there were grave concerns for his safety. There was a precedent of royal active duty. His uncle, the Duke of York, served in the Falklands War, and Harry saw action in Afghanistan as a forward air controller for NATO forces. William continued his military training in the Royal Navy and Royal Air Force. He enrolled in an intensive four-month training course at RA of Cranwell Training Unit and enjoyed his first flight as a pilot. Well, I've still had a tell tale and I haven't been built for a plane, so, so far it looks all right. But um, it was one of those experiences where I thought, it'll never come around. And I thought, you know, hopefully a bit longer yet, I'll get more practice. And the next thing I know, my instructor jumps out and goes, go and get on with it. And I was left there sort of looking around the room and going, uh, what? So uh, I just did it and once you get up in the air, it was fine. So bad. William helped to man a C-17 Globemaster flight to Afghanistan, during which he assisted in the repatriation of the body of trooper Robert Pearson. It is said that his fellow crew affectionately gave him the nickname Billy the Fish, a pun on his title. Upon completing the course, he was presented with his RAF wings by his father Charles who had also received his wings after training at the same unit. This was a proud and happy day for all at the ceremony. William then started his Navy training in the Caribbean island of Montserrat. Southern Wales' uh, presence uh, uh, in HMS Iron Duke has, uh, has made absolutely no difference to the way I conduct my operations. He is, uh, he, he's integrated entirely into my ship's company. Uh, what I'm able to do is expose him, as, which is my remit from senior officers, to expose him to every facet of naval operations uh, as they unfold. During his training, the Prince took part in a secret underwater mission and helped to identify and capture a small vessel that had been transporting a vast quantity of cocaine worth approximately 40 million pounds. After a stint with Army Air Corps, it was announced that he would transfer to the RAF in order to train as a full-time search and rescue helicopter pilot. This enables him to take an active role as a member of the armed forces without being deployed on combat operations. William then began training in Shawbury, where Harry was training as an Army Air Corps helicopter pilot. Right. This is quite a special moment for you too, isn't it? I mean, this is possibly the last time you've, you've all been living together. First and last time we'll be living yeah. together. I'm it's, sure it's, been, it's been a fairly emotional experience. Yeah. How much inter-service rivalry is there between you two? None at all. No, not at all, really. I mean, everyone, oh, everyone knows the Army's better than the Army. I'm an old boy anyway, so it's, uh, it's fine. Wouldn't There's good bands so. between Army pilots and the RF pilots, obviously, as well. And the neighbor pilots just, you know, in the background, they didn't do anything, so it's fine. And would you live together again? You know, much experience being the same? Well, bear in mind, I cook him and feed him basically every day. I think he's, uh, he's done rather well. I told us the other week that he did all the washing up. He does do a bit of the washing up, then he leaves most of it in the sink, and then it comes back in the morning, and I have to wash it up. Oh, the lies. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the lies.
Do you end up tight, find yourself tidying up after him? Or? Yeah, a fair bit of tidying. He snores a lot as well, keeps me out all night long. Not good for we're showing a bad <laughs> No, I don't know that. I think that's very important we say that. And it's, it's somebody's birthday on, on Sunday. Um, are you a bit nervous? Any, any presents you want um, your brother to get for you? Basically, he's probably only literally just realised that you said that Thanks now and, that. Uh, <laughs> and hasn't got me a present, but uh, I wouldn't expect anything else anyway. It's, uh, I'll be lucky to get a card. Uh, it's going very well, Rocket. It's, um, it's been... Um, I've moved obviously off from the school because uh, now being a far superior RAF pilot, I've now moved on to the Griffin. Oh. Um, and it's, uh, it's good fun. It, you know, I've got more of a crew atmosphere, so I've got guys in the back, and it's really weird. You're flying along, and you get these random voices coming your ear that you're not, you, you can't even see. And uh, you've got to sort of respond. Yeah, exactly. They're usually <laughs> hanging off a skid. Yeah, just random voices, yeah. Uh, but no, it's good fun. It's, um, it's quite a long way to go yet before I'm finished, but um, I'm looking forward to you know, a few challenges ahead and, and flying. So to me, I didn't join the forces to be, like I said a lot of times before, molly cuddled or treated any different. And as far as I'm concerned, in my eyes, if Harry can do it, then I can do it. Uh, I don't really separate us in that much difference. And I think as a future head of the armed forces, it's really important that I was get, you get, at least get the opportunity uh, to be credible and to do the job that I signed up for uh, and to do the best I can. I and mean, that's all I ever wanted to do. And the search and rescue role is now, you know, slightly, different so obviously being able to go to Afghanistan but it's still doing an important job and yeah, I hope direction. that it's yeah I hope it's just in the right direction exactly for the future. Due to William's future role in the monarchy a long-term career in the military is unlikely. From birth it was destined that William would be an ambassador for the monarchy but the royal family would not have expected his popularity to be as great as it is. Even when visiting Australia, which has a strong Republican movement, he was enthusiastically received by adoring fans, mostly lovesick girls. The hype surrounding his arrival was similar to that of his parents' visit to Australia when Wills was a baby. On a previous visit, a girl planted a kiss on Prince Charles, catching him off guard. William said during his tour that his father was still misty-eyed about the immoral moment. Premier Christina Keneally welcomed William to Sydney. The Prince enjoyed a barbecue on the steps of the Opera House before hitting the harbour in a jet ski boat. Later, the pin-up prince turned into a professional soldier with a truly impressive display of firepower. He took part in a live firing exercise with paratroopers on a visit to an army barracks just outside Sydney and managed to fire off a near-perfect score. A year earlier, a mountainous area in the state of Victoria was decimated by what became known as the Black Saturday bushfires. At the time of this natural disaster, William and Harry signed a book of condolence at the Australian High Commission in London. Whilst in Australia, William paid a visit to the community of Flowerdale, which was living in temporary housing, having lost their homes in the fire. The residents welcomed William with another Aussie barbecue, dressing him in an apron whilst cooking sausages and burgers. The prince then enjoyed a game of cricket with some of the local children. Matthew Hayden, a former Australian cricketer, was pleased to see the Prince taking part in an Australian tradition. It's about having fun uh, on a cricket ground. I think all of us one day dreamt of playing for our country and it all started in the backyard. And for Prince William to be a part of that, it's a very special time. At the end of his visit, William spoke at the Australia Day celebrations in Melbourne. The Prince said his parents and Harry had fond memories of their time spent in the land down under. There's that other guy with the ginger hair who just never ever stops banging on about you and I haven't lived because I haven't been to Australia, blah, blah, blah. It was rumoured that William and Kate may travel to Australia on their first official tour as a married couple. Back in London, Prince William followed in the footsteps of his late mother and the Queen Mother when he was made an honorary barrister at the Middle Temple Hall. Your Highness Prince William of Wales, 
the name of the masters of the bench, I call you to the degree of the Ottobar. The honorary degree gives William the opportunity to meet with barristers and members of the judiciary to develop an understanding of how the law operates. At the ceremony, it was reported that William promised not to practice as a barrister, except for contesting the odd speeding ticket. It's apparent that William possesses great confidence, maturity and sensitivity. At a similar age, his father, Prince Charles, seemed awkward and uncertain. Royal insiders have suggested that the Queen may choose to overlook Charles and grant William the next succession to the throne. William's eloquence and maturity was prevalent when he gave a reading at the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh's diamond wedding anniversary service at Westminster Abbey. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us. The Queen is the first reigning British sovereign to celebrate the milestone of a 60-year wedding anniversary. She is all too aware that the success of William and Kate's marriage is crucial for the future stability of the modern monarchy. History shows that marriages in the royal family have often been short-lived and at times heartbreaking. George VI broke with tradition by marrying commoner Lady Elizabeth Bowes Lyon, who had previously rejected two of his proposals, as she was reluctant to make the sacrifices necessary to become a member of the royal family. The couple enjoyed 16 years of marriage until George passed away aged 56. The Queen Mother was left to live life as a widow for the next 50 years until her death. Queen Elizabeth's marriage to Prince Philip was a rare bright spot in the history of royal weddings. Although it is believed that the Queen Mother initially opposed the union because Philip had no financial standing and was foreign born. In 1947, the wedding provided Britain with a morale boost in the tough post-war period. Princess Margaret and Tony Armstrong Jones were regarded as the most glamorous members of Britain's royal family during the swinging 60s. But their fairy tale marriage was doomed, as Tony lived an unpredictable bohemian lifestyle and was unfaithful. The couple divorced in 1978. The wedding of the century was between Prince Charles and Lady Diana Spencer in 1981. The couple were married at St. Paul's Cathedral before an estimated television audience of 750 million. In less than a year, the couple produced their first child, William. But by then, Prince Charles's long-running relationship with Camilla Parker Bowles was putting a strain on the marriage. It was said that Diana felt like she was living in a marriage of three people. The union was formally ended with a decree absolute in 1996 and Diana died in a car crash the following year. So long as you both shall live. I will. Princess Anne married Mark Phillips in 1973. It was said at the time that Phillips controversially turned down an earldom on his wedding day from the Queen. The couple had two children together before rumors and subsequent confirmation of Mark Phillips's infidelity resulted in a divorce in 1992. Anne later married Timothy Lawrence, becoming the first royal divorcee to remarry since 1905. Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson had been friends since childhood and married in 1986. The couple appeared to have a happy marriage, producing two daughters. But Andrew's military career and critical media attention towards the Duchess of York led to fractures in their relationship. 
The marriage ended in divorce after just 10 years. Prince Edward and Sophie Rhys-Jones were married in 1999 at St George's Chapel at Windsor Castle. Although this was a lower key event than other royal weddings this century, the spectacle drew an enthusiastic crowd to Windsor Park. The Earl and Countess have two children together. The most controversial royal wedding in recent times was between the divorcees Prince Charles of Wales and Mrs Camilla Parker Bowles. Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip did not attend their son's civil wedding ceremony, but they were present at the blessing service and held a reception for the couple at Windsor Castle. William served as a witness at his father's second marriage. Only time will tell if Charles and Camilla will become the next king and queen. But William's destiny is clear. The day is approaching when he will be crowned king and with Kate by his side, the monarchy is in very safe hands. Since birth, William's personal life has been the subject of great media attention. More recently, royal commentators have been following his relationship with Kate Middleton, which began in 2003 while attending St Andrews University. William and Kate met their first week at university because they were both at St Andrews studying history of art. But at that time, Kate was going out with someone else, in fact, a friend of William's. And it wasn't until their second year of, of the four-year course that William became really close to Kate because he shared a house with her and, and, and three, three other friends of his. And they shared a really pretty Georgian townhouse in the centre of St Andrews. But it still was about a year later before the, the national press sort of logged onto the fact that she was an item with him, not with anyone else. The prince had developed a great disdain for the paparazzi and believes they contributed to his mother's death. The royal family moved to shield William from the press by providing tabloids with regular updates of his life. He switched his main subject from art history to geography and excelled. Catherine Middleton. He graduated the same year as Kate with upper second class honours, the highest honours awarded to any heir of the British throne. William Wales. Well, they had a wonderful time at St Andrews because they really were protected. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of a local paparazzi, but they really were protected. And then they moved out of the town into a little farmhouse. So they were living together, which is, is sort of quite unheard of, really, for a sort of future king to be openly living with his girlfriend. Um, so they had a wonderful time. They had, you know, four years of a really good time. But of course, when they both left, or came down as you call it, uh, they slightly went their separate ways because, you know, William ha had things to do, places to go, and so did she. Rumours of a possible engagement swirled around the pair. Middleton attended William's passing out parade at Sandhurst. This was the first high profile event she attended as his guest, and speculation grew. The relationship was followed so closely that bookmakers took bets on the possibility of a royal wedding. The media's focus on Kate was so sharp that when she received a parking ticket in Switzerland, in the Alps, skiing down the mountains, cuddling and kissing, having a whale of a time, and I, you could not have predicted three weeks ago that um, you'd be here today announcing that, that, that they've split up once and for all. There was a great deal of speculation about the possible reasons for the split. Some said that Kate felt William had not been paying her enough attention, and photos emerged of William in a nightclub partying with young women. I was absolutely shocked when I discovered that they, him and Kate finally decided to split. But I suppose if I think about it, not surprised because the clues were there. You know, William was just getting up to pranks with girls at nightclubs in Bournemouth and uh, normally they go on holiday at Easter time for, uh, for uh, 10 days. This time this year they didn't so the clue was there but um, I'm, still, I'm still shocked because I thought she and he were a perfect couple. Other reports stated that he had received advice from members of the royal family not to rush into marriage 
William also went on the record saying he was far too young to marry. William, after what happened to his father, cannot get it wrong. He cannot marry the wrong woman. And I suppose, in a funny kind of way, it's better that we're here today talking about his girlfriend leaving, splitting up with her, than us talking about a royal divorce, which might cause serious problems for Buckingham Palace in the future. Several months later, the couple resumed their relationship. Kate attended a party at Lulworth Army Barracks as Prince William's guest. And now that things have settled a bit, they, they are seeing a, a great deal of each other because they're both in London. They're not living together. Kate has a flat in the King's Road. William has his apartment at Clarence House. Um, but they can see each other all the time. And of course, the problem that Kate has now is that she's followed everywhere by paparazzi. Kate has to decide if she's prepared to go on with this relationship because it, her life will never be her own now. Or if she really can't hack it because it's not, she's not going to get married tomorrow. Um, and who knows what will happen. Um, she's starting up a children's clothing company, which of course she, she most people that leave university wouldn't think of starting their own company immediately. But because of her association with William, people are clamoring to get a bit of her. So, you know, if she's a bright girl, she's taking it. With his dashing good looks and irresistible charm, Prince William has emerged as the British royal family's golden boy. Well, it's been very nice, very well <laughs> William gives the impression of being a well-mannered, responsible and mature young man, who shows a strong sense of duty and loyalty to the royal family, fully aware of the role he is to play as the future king. My brother and I were lucky enough to grow up supported by the love and nurturing of our family. They saw to our education, our health, our well-being and every other need. Since birth, his upbringing has been carefully managed and his destiny thoughtfully mapped out by the monarchy. His greatest influence was his mother, Diana, Princess of Wales, who gave him a truly unique and loving childhood throughout her all too short life. We wanted to have this big concert with, you know, full of energy, full of um, sort of fun and happiness, which I knew she would have wanted. And on her birthday as well, it's got to be the best birthday present she's ever had. William uses his profile and status for the greater good and is a tireless campaigner for the environment and humanitarian causes. To alleviate poverty and assist development in African countries. It was while excelling at sports and university studies that his greatly publicised romance with Kate Middleton began. I think for William, I should think he's probably not very keen to get married because, you know, he's got a lot of living to do first. After eight years of courting, Kate would have to wait no more. They became engaged and are destined to have the wedding of their generation. Royalists pray that their marriage will pass the test of time, unlike those that have gone before them. I will. Kate has been at William's side throughout the major milestones of his military career. I didn't join the forces to be treated any different. He may be the future king, but first and foremost, he is a protective and loving big brother to Prince Harry. He does do a bit of the washing up, then he leaves most of it in the sink, and then it comes back in the morning and I have to wash it up. <laughs> oh, the lies. William has shown courage and maturity beyond his years, and has transformed from being a shy teenager into an independent, strong-willed young man, with the destiny of the monarchy resting firmly on his shoulders. Advantage of that, and as she might make a very big success of it. Well, Kate comes from a very, I suppose we would call it middle-class family. They live in Berkshire, and her parents are very entrepreneurial. They started an internet company selling party goods, and it's done very well indeed. But would Kate's middle-class family be welcome at Buckingham Palace? I don't think that the royal family integrate with anyone, unless it's really serious. I mean, even Sophie Wessex's parents weren't integrated into the royal family, ever, really. 
Um, I, I think that it's something they simply don't do. The only parents they ever really integrated in was, was Mark Phillips' parents, and the Queen got on very well with his mother. But otherwise, they take you over. It was said that the Queen expressed a private desire that the couple should date for at least five years, and that Middleton should first secure a proper full-time job before the couple announced their engagement. Finally, on November 16th, 2010, it was announced that Prince William and Kate Middleton were engaged. The Prince popped the question during a holiday in Kenya. William gave Kate his mother's famous diamond and sapphire engagement ring. The wedding date was set for April 29th, 2011. The funds raised from the broadcast rights of Kate and William's first interview after announcing their engagement were donated to charity. Throughout the Prince's childhood, his mother Diana exposed William to numerous charities. Following her death, he was destined to continue her good work and legacy. <laughs> Who's on which? Who, who did this one? James. James, is that your one, James? Yes. William and Harry formed their own charitable foundation and became patrons of many of the charities that their mother supported. William is dedicated to making a difference by becoming involved with charities, rather than just being a royal ornament by simply attending opening ceremonies. The Prince is patron of Centrepoint. This charity assists the homeless. My brother and I were lucky enough to grow up supported by the... To get near her Chelsea home, it made headlines and the evening news. We understand that nobody, uh, nobody likes getting a parking ticket, but we have to make sure that we fairly and consistently enforce the rules and regulations, which is what happened here. And I'm very pleased that Kate, uh, Kate was very gracious about the way in which the, uh, about the, uh, receiving the ticket, as you would expect from someone who uh, may well be the future Queen of England. Media attention became so intense that William made a specific request to the press to keep their distance from Kate. As I say, she, she is famous. She knows that she's going to have to put up with odd photos. But there's a difference between taking a couple of respectful, distant photos and wishing her a good morning and standing with a lens this long right in her face and trying to take a photo up her skirt or something, which is, to me, beyond contempt. It was an all too familiar sight for the monarchy. In the lead up to Diana's engagement, she too was besieged by the media. How well you're coping with all the press attention? Well, as you can, you can see, you can tell. <laughs> are, you, are you bearing up with it quite well though? Because it must be quite a strain with all of us after you. Well, it is, naturally. In March 2007, Middleton complained of media harassment by the Daily Mirror. The possibility of legal action against the media was raised. News International responded by banning all its newspapers from using paparazzi pictures of Middleton. The idea that we should introduce some sort of law that stops paparazzi photographers following around those who, because they go out with a celebrity, become themselves celebrities, I think is wrong. Because in the end, if you go out with the future King of England, there is going to be a huge media interest in what you're up to. That's just reality. We need to know what's going on. We need to know what uh, the royalty are up to. By April 2007, the tabloids need to know became too much for Kate. The Sun newspaper reported that the couple had split during a holiday in the Swiss resort of Zermatt. Well, the, the story has been, uh, when will they get married? And we were so preoccupied on that, and everyone was, that the story that when will they split was not something we even contemplated. So it is a surprise, it's a bolt from the blue. Um, only three weeks ago, the two of them were in Zermatt.